My name's Naomi Drown. I'm a technician member of the Institution of Civil Engineers and I'm a project manager at the Environment Agency. We're standing in the Willis Faber building at the moment, designed by Norman Foster and his wife Wendy. You might know Norman Foster for his better known buildings, such as the Gherkin or even the world's tallest road bridge, the Malau Viaduct in France. Willis Faber and Dumas, now Willis Towers and Watson, a major UK insurance company, decided to move their headquarters out of London and chose Ipswich due to its good transport links and also low overhead charges. They became one of the major employers in Ipswich. I never knew what a civil engineer was until I'd already started my degree doing architecture. But when I lost my job in 2008, I decided to do something different, something challenging, and that's when I joined the Environment Agency and started my career in engineering. So how did I get into engineering? I can honestly say that the Willis Faber building was one of the first buildings to spark my interest in architecture, which led me on my path to become a civil engineer. The Willis building was completed in 1975, but you might not think that by looking at it. You could easily think it was only built last year, and it's clear to see that it was one of the high-tech buildings its time. When it was listed in 1991, it was one of the youngest Grade 1 listed buildings in the world at only 16 years old. It has a swimming pool on its ground floor and a roof garden and penthouse restaurant with panoramic views of the town. When it was being constructed, my parents lived at the Greyfriars building just opposite. My dad took countless photos of the construction, which I heard all about growing up as a kid. I couldn't help but be fascinated by this modern building. There was nothing like it at the time. The columns on the ground floor are the diameter of a metre, but taper as they get higher along the building. The concrete floor slab cantilevers off the external perimeter columns. The roof pavilion restaurant is a lattice steel base frame supported by extended concrete columns. The floor plan extends the limits of the site, creating a glass island in the heart of Ipswich. Light from the glass roofed atrium allows light to flow through the building past the bank of escalators into the deep plan office below. Another high-tech aspect of the building at the time. The striking reflective frameless curtain walling with its almost invisible fixing details supports the 930 glass panels covering 4,000 square metres that mirrors the surrounding townscape by day but allows a view of the interior and its activities at night. There were fears that because the building was between the town and the football club that over-enthusiastic fans might damage the glass. But apparently, Norman Foster tested this theory himself by throwing a brick at one of the glass panels. Apparently, the brick just bounced off and fell on the floor, not leaving any mark on the glass. Many modifications have been made to the building, including breakout areas to allow, allow staff to sit and relax and enjoy their surroundings, as well as modifications to the escalators and the lighting to save energy. I couldn't recommend a job in civil engineering enough. You get to solve problems, find opportunities and make a real difference to society. There's so much opportunity out there, so much choice, so many ways to shape your own career, so many different aspects of where you can work and you can work all over the world. <laughs> the only disadvantage of being a civil engineer, you don't always get to choose the weather. <laughs>